Hello everybody. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right. In today's video, we're going to look at how to um, create a SageMaker instance. And um, um, this creating the SageMaker instance right now is being done because I want to use it to create a layer. But I'm just going to stop it after creating the SageMaker in, uh, notebook instance. So we're going to create a SageMaker notebook instance, not a SageMaker instance. So I'm going to create a, a SageMaker um, notebook instance. That's what we're going to do. And it's going to be a quick one. So you <coughs> you can just right click. I have it um, on my favorite. Or you can just do SageMaker. It pops up you can click on this as an example you can click on that to actually save it as a set favorite uh, you can click on it now you have so many things here uh, you have our studio you have um, SageMaker studio lab but I just want a notebook instance so I scroll down to look for notebook instance and this is the notebook instance so i'll click on it then there's nothing here i haven't created any notebook instance yet so i'm just going to click on that i'm just going to make it simple so i'm going to make it test test i'm not going to change the instance type it depends on the kind of work you want to do you can go uh, up to the maximum if you want it's in, in finite 24 large that's the biggest you can have right now as a 2024 match so i'm going to just to i'm going to use the ml t3 medium um i'm just going to leave everything as it is uh i think the highest version is the linus 2 jupiter um, jupiter lab 3 um for configuration it depends on what you want if you have i'm going to explain this sometime the live configuration i'm going to explain it sometime not today if you want to automate a notebook you can use the life cycle configuration to do that so now you can either create your own a new one you can create a new notebook or a, a new row sorry so i just created a new row right there so i clicked on it and i created a new role for for um sage maker or if you have an existing one you click on it you can use an, an existing one because i don't have an existing one this has been created for me now if you have a vpc you can select your vpc right from here if you want to use a vpc but i don't want to use a vpc so after that, all you have to do is to create the notebook instance. Now the notebook instance is pending. The status is pending. So after it moves from pending to in-service, when it gets to in-service, then we will be able to actually view our first Jupyter notebook. Uh, so I'm going to open the Jupyter notebook in the Jupyter lab. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to cut this place off. Now we have our um, notebook instance active, it's in service. So the first one is to open a Jupyter notebook and see how it looks like. You click on it to open a new window for you. At the same time, let's just open. The Jupyter Lab too, if you like using Jupyter Lab. All right, so we have our Jupyter notebook. We have nothing here. What you can do is to have all these are um, environments you can use on Jupyter Lab. So let's say let's use the favorite one which is python uh, like let's try to test if 
everything works and as a python programmer the most easy one that we can do is to print your hello world yeah so we just printed out our hello world so our notebook is actually working um so this is a jupyter notebook now we can go to our jupyter lab um now on our jupyter lab this is to load in so we can choose which notebook um environment we want to use this is PyTorch. this is tensorflow this is spark but i just want to know more um jupyter lab so i'm just going to use this then here so you can just do your test and see if it's working then you let's see how it works you can do your um hello world it prints out quite well we can also um use the terminal here uh which is a line of space terminal that you can actually check um pip install um pip install for instance let's say let's pip install pandas it automatically pip install pandas for you and since a panda is already on it it's cool with it it's just going to tell me it's already satisfied now um, you can also do some few um unix stuff it can show you you can also change your um direct rate let's say i want to go to sage maker direct rate there you go so now let's see if i'm in sage maker direct rate. yep that is sage maker direct rate. now let's check where i'm working right now i'm working in um sage maker no trick so this is something that we can do um on the jupyter lab and we have our jupyter notebook too here so our notebook instance has been created it's functioning and we can also stop it by just selecting it and hitting going to action and hitting stop so this is all we're going to do for today uh, after this video we're going to the next video is going to be how to add um, Python packages to your Lambda function. And I'm going to use the SageMaker Jupyter Lab to do that. And the reason why I'm going to use that is because since we are going to use the, if you're going to use SageMaker, um, we're going to use Lambda function, which is built, and the Python that is on it is built upon the SageMaker Jupyter Notebook environment it shares the same um bottle um version so it becomes easy to actually know which python um, package is supposed to come in if the python package coming in or python library package coming in doesn't work with the bottle on um the bottle type it's going to um, give you an error so it's difficult when you do it outside of um SageMaker or the aws platform so if you use aws cli it's easy because it's also a platform of aws so thank you all for um watching and don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you